Good evening, everyone. My name is Florencio Vasquez, and I'd just like you all to picture yourselves in a small scenario. You're at a date with a really cute girl, you know, you're, you're watching the movie, and you want to get, yeah, exactly, you know, you want to get, you know, you want to make your move. So you lean over, you stretch, exactly. You look her in the eyes, and you find out that she has turned into a zombie. Oh, hey. <laughs> you push her out, and you see your whole city is infested with zombies. What you're experiencing is the zombie outbreak. But of course we know this only happens in movies. This is not real. And according to my survey, a lot of you think that that's mostly where movies get their ideas. And just It's just a zombie idea. Um, but actually, I'm going to inform you about the origin of zombies. And just see here, you see it's actually uh, an original zombie where the movie producers get their ideas. And I'm also going to talk to you about some basic preparedness that a lot of movies tell you to prepare for the zombie apocalypse, but actually just going to sort of debunk them. Some of you may be asking yourself, where do zombies come from? They actually come from the, the zombie origin comes from the southwestern area of Africa, known as Kimbundu, is where it all started. And the word zombie is actually a Kimbundu word called unzombe, which uh, literally translates to a dead person's soul. And uh, zombification is just a part of the Afro-Caribbean religion known as voodoo. Here you see a Hunmin priest. What he's doing is he's doing a ritual with what we call a zombie powder, which is a tetrodotoxin, which basically, this is the burning way of sending the messages to the body, and it will block off the messages and put your body in a hibernation. The tetrodotoxin is found in blowfish, and you have also might have heard of this sleeping powder in the Romeo and Juliet story, when Juliet uses it, she goes to sleep. But unfortunately, it didn't have such a romantic ending. <coughs> what happens is when these people would take this potion, they would go to sleep underground, and when they woke up, they would be buried six feet under with little to no oxygen, freaking out, screaming for their lives, and when they were dug out, they would, they would suffer severe brain damage because of the lack of oxygen, and they would sort of just wander around as the living dead, which is where the movie producers get their ideas. And this is kind of a scary picture, so nobody freak out. This is the walking corpse of Toraha, Indonesia, which I obtained from Wester.edu. What's happening here is this person has already died, and a leader of black magic, Hungan priest, is walking this corpse to its grave. And uh, the, cor the, the graves are buried above limestone mountains, which apparently is important for some reason. Uh, the scientists have not been able to discover how they're doing this, but they just know that you cannot touch the corpse or appoint it. Once you do so, it falls and is not able to walk again. A virus zombie is something we all see in the, the movies. Again, Shaun of the Dead, Resident Evil, Night of the Living Dead. Um, but, and they all tell you the same thing. It comes from a virus, don't get bit, aim for the head. <laughs> I've heard in my survey, a lot of you uh, just think that uh, it all comes from a, from a virus, and you would be right. Uh, but a lot of you don't know that you're supposed to aim for the head. And from the movies, they just tell you to just pick up a weapon and shoot it. And it seems, and they make it seem <laughs> so very easy. But you got to get back to basics because not everybody has one of those weapons in their home. So you just keep it simple. <laughs> and, yes, any of these weapons are very easy to use, but only for a one-time thing. If you want to, uh, if you're planning on doing a bit more, you know, lengthy one, I assume the crowbar. It has a curved design, which is ideal for bashing. And the somewhat sharp design is the ideal for stabbing. Now, it's not as cool as a sword, but it can also be used for practical reasons, should you need something, have, to have something get out of your way. Um, when it comes to firearms, uh, if you know how to use it, get it. If you don't know the difference between the trigger and the barrel, then you probably shouldn't pick up a gun. <laughs> <laughs> a shotgun is something you see in the Resident Evil movies. This woman seems to know how to use it. That guy seems to know how to use it very well. And that's mainly the main reason everybody thinks the shotgun is the best weapon. And also it looks so very simple, but in reality, you have to know that there are a lot of parts to it. Pistol, same idea. Uh, while it is very simple to use, that's the trigger. Bullets go in there, bullet goes out there. <laughs> um, if you know how to use it, use it. Uh, the main, in Leopard Dead, uh, the video game, it's a secondary weapon. Never your, it's never your first choice. It has limited accuracy and a limited ammo range. But 
don't leave it alone. It's very easy to use, and they're good for one zombie, but bad for a lot more. <laughs> now here you see what we call the zombie hunter. He's got a face mask, all protected. He's got his crowbar, he's got his pistol right there, loads of ammunition, a backpack full of medical supplies, and he seems ready to go. But sometimes the best offense is the best defense. What you see here is a tornado-proof house, high off the ground, basically two entrances, two exits, and it sh should you encounter a zombie apocalypse, just destroy the stairs because zombies cannot climb. Now, in Shot of the Dead, you see them, they just go to a bar and they fight, which is ideally the best defense for a class two outbreak. An office building is very high up, so you can get to a roof and a helicopter can just come and take you away. Uh, it has one basic entrance which can be blocked with office supplies. A CVS, same thing. One entrance can be blocked off with a car or something on the inside, and it should last you about two weeks. Now in the movies we all see the class 3 outbreak, which in the zombie survival guide defines it as the total capacity, everything is gone. So what you want to do is go to an offshore oil rig. <laughs> it seems, hey, they can hold out for about six months to a year full of food and supplies and basic first aid things. And as far as you know, zombies cannot swim. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bring me up in a nutshell. We just talked about the Hollywood zombies versus the voodoo zombies. Talked about basic defense and offense as well. Just to sort of sum everything up, I uh, just want to say that should you find yourself in the middle of a class 4 outbreak, the whole world is gone. Rebuilding would be your best bet. Government handbooks talk about rebuilding society from, from, the, from the ground up, which should help in handy. Basic first aid is also a must, because what's the point of surviving zombies if you're just going to get scurvy or stung by a scorpion or something like that? Always carry first aid and always have a plan. Because if you're just going to wander around aimlessly and not know what you're going to do, well, you might as well end up as one of the living dead. I'm Florence Thank you.